Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and Chucky2009. And today we are going to be talking about 7018 restrikes. So as we know, 7018 is a very common stick electrode. It has a million and one uses. I mean, every day people use it on everything from farm equipment to X-ray quality pipe welds. I've even used it on cast iron. But one of the drawbacks of it is it can be kind of hard to uh, restrike like this right now. You're pretty much guaranteed one good arc strike. Hopefully you can get a successful, you know, arc running from that first arc strike. But uh, that's pretty much all you get. And so today we're going to be taking a good, better, and best approach to uh, some of the 18 restrikes. So first off, let's see exactly what causes these problems. So as you know, this white substance on the outside of our bare steel electrode here is what's known as flux. And basically what happens is uh, this stuff burns and what it does is it produces a gas, kind of a cloud of smoke that protects your newly formed weld puddle from contaminants found in the atmosphere and it forms the substance on top of the weld which you have to then remove. A little bit harder one-handed and uh, you know there's the finished weld. Now the problem is not only does this stuff form over top of your weld, it also forms over top of your stick electrode. As you can see we have that nice little ball of slag in there and uh, it's for comparison here I'll show you what a brand new electrode looks like. This right here now as you can see on the new electrode on the right that bare steel surface makes easy contact with uh, with your workpiece and strikes the arc but the problem is with the used electrode on the left we have that ball of slag between the bare steel and the workpiece so there are three common ways of getting rid of that. The first is what I refer to as the good old smash and strike. Now with the good old smash and strike method, uh, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to put the electrode back in its electrode holder and then when I go to strike the arc I'm just going to mack it on the, uh, the workpiece here a few times. And what that's going to do is it's going to break that ball of slag off of there which will expose the bare electrode which will arc to the workpiece and uh, we'll be back in business. Now, the good thing about this method is it's really freaking easy. It requires no tools. You don't even have to take the electrode out. You, just, you stop, you bash it on the workpiece a few times, and you continue welding. It's pretty idiot proof. However, the bad part is not only is it pretty much guaranteed to remove that ball of slag, it can also remove a chunk of good flux with it. I mean, you can crack the flux coating on your electrode, an entire piece of it can fall off. And uh, this doesn't happen every time, but I'd say when I do this, Maybe one out of ten times, you know, I'll end up damaging the flux coating. But uh, regardless, there are better ways to do this. So, alright, this is what's going to be referred to as the good method for restriking 7018 and allow me to demonstrate. As you can see, it got the job done, but uh, that wasn't very smooth. As you can see, I stuck it there because I was trying to mac it and it stuck. But uh, it did get the job done, like I said. So that's the good method. Next up, the minorly better method. All right, now to explainify this, I will say that as you can see, when you're welding and you break the arc, that ball of slag forms. So for the better method, what we're going to do is when we go to break the arc, it's going to go like that. I hope that doesn't happen. We're just going to give it a nice flick of the wrist down and hopefully that molten ball of slag will, will fly off the end of the electrode and hit the floor. Now, uh, this is kind of cool because it looks somewhat cool when you do it right, but it's bad because you're literally throwing a glob of molten metal and it's a nice way to accidentally catch your garage on fire. If there's people around, if you're working in close proximity to other people, it's probably not the best idea. However, it will make either of the other two methods uh, a lot easier. I guess technically it's not its own method, but it really benefits the other two methods. So, uh, all right, next up the, I don't even know what you call this one, but let's do it. All right, so I've repositioned my workpiece going vertical up because this way I just give it a nice flick and it hits the floor. Whereas if I do it in a flat position, I'm going to shoot it that way, possibly the wall or something. And uh, so, enough about that. Let's do it. That was it, that was it. As you can see, it's not all that impressive. 
impressive, but uh, let's take a look at the electrode now. Alright, as you can see, we still have our bare steel electrode burned up inside of its little flux coating. And you can see a lot more of the bare steel than you could with the old smash and strike method. Because as you can see, we did take most of that slag and, uh, and shoot it off there. There's still a little bit, it won't be a perfect restrike. But uh, this is a lot better than the smash and strike method. But like I said, it does pose some uh, potentially imminent safety risks. So you're thinking to yourself, there's got to be a better way, right? And uh, yes, yes there is and allow me to demonstrate. So this is what we're left with. We have our half used electrode with a ball of slag on the end of it and uh, that's that new electrode again just for comparison and I'm only holding my finger behind it because if I don't the camera won't have anything to focus on. But anyway, alright now for the best method. Basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this file, it's just a regular Nicholson made in Mexico flat bastard file. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file off this ball of slag. Sounds really simple, and that's because it is really simple, but it's something that can make your life a lot easier. No smashing, which could potentially damage flux. No potentially burning down your shop. That, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, bare steel. It'll arc right to the workpiece. But I did kind of take away that extra little chunk of slag there, which I didn't mean to do. This normally doesn't happen, but of course it did because I'm trying to demonstrate this on camera. Uh, let me do another one real quick. Alright, here's our glob. Here's our file. Let's try that again. Maybe if I'm not so violent with it. I guess I got carried away there. Ah, uh, it's much better. Almost there. There you go. Alright, this is what I wanted to show you all last time. As you can see, the bare steel electrode is now, once again, level with the flux coating. And when we compare this to our brand new electrode, we can see it's pretty much the same concept. And uh, as you can see, that new electrode has a little, I'll call it a bevel or chamfer of some kind on the flux. If you really want to go all in, you can take your file, and do that. Watch me screw up this electrode now. <laughs> I'm trying to be really delicate with this, but realistically, when I'm in the shop welding, this takes me maybe four or five seconds for electrode. There you go, and for all extensive purposes, this thing uh, should restrike just like a brand new electrode, or strike like a new electrode, I should say. Let's try it out. Much better, right, ladies and gentlemen? I realize I stuck it, but of course that's my fault because I was filming myself, so of course I screwed up. But anyway, as you can see, that's a major, major improvement over the old smash and strike method. And just, just for comparison, we do that one too real quick. And using the, uh, the best method, like I just showed you guys, will cut down on your probability of putting down an accidental arc strike and making your piece all nice and ugly. Uh, it'll save you a lot of electrodes because you won't run the risk of damaging the flux. It's, uh, I, I feel like it's the way to go, and what I like to do is when I'm working on a project, I won't re-strike any 7018s, I'll just make a pile of the, uh, the ones that need to be re-struck. And then I'll sit there all at once and file them down real quick, and I do the last like quarter of the project just with the uh, the restart with the filed smooth 7018s. So uh, all right, well hopefully these tips will help you out. I just figured I'd pass them along to you guys. Hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, YouTube, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more.